Hello everybody. Thanks for stopping by my shop again. I really appreciate you taking your time to come see me. It's uh, Chuck, Outside Screwball. And uh, this is part three of the Holdridge uh, Radii Cutter build, building uh, this tooling. And you know I've been copying uh, the originals that I borrowed from my friend. And you can see uh, there's one here in the uh, lathe. Um, we'll get there. So let's, uh, let's have a little uh, discussion first. Uh, I've had some real good eight ball magic. Um, I went to uh, the flea market the other day and uh, I don't have any film of that purchase but uh, I scored really well. It was a great eight ball eight ball day. I ended up uh, getting a uh, very expensive uh, makeup mirror, two-sided lighted uh, brush nickel for five bucks and ended up getting uh, a uh, like a drafting uh, light uh, for five bucks. Um, I also bought, uh, what else did I get that day? I can't remember but I, I walked out of there smiling. I uh, made some really good purchases. Uh, then I went to an estate sale and uh, let's, uh, let's cut to the uh, video of what I purchased at the estate sale. Um, and uh, at the end of it, you're going to see the video. There'll be a couple of photographs of a waffle iron and then a waffle being cooked in the waffle iron. Um, oh, shit. It was my lights. Hang on. I'm not even going to edit that out. What the hell? So anyway, <laughs> uh, my lights have a motion detector, and I walk in and out of the shop, and I, when I'm going to be here for a while, I forget to click it over, so it won't do that. So anyway, uh, my waffle iron. Uh, at the estate sale, uh, I picked it up, looked at it, brand new in the box, uh, offered uh, 15 She said no. She said 40 did a quick look on my phone. Uh, $450 for the uh, waffle iron is what it retails for in the stores. So I bought that and uh, that was a good buy. And uh, you uh, will see the video uh, right now. How's this for 25 bucks? All the, uh, all the drawers had paper liners in them so all the felt is tits. Not a bad, uh, not a bad buy. Those are all emptied out. All the screwdrivers, all the hammers, anything down there, and some stuff down there. Sweet and keys, got everything. Twenty-five dollars at an estate sale. Okay, we're back for that video of the uh, toolbox. Uh, goodbye for 25 bucks with everything in it. Um, and then uh, let's move on to Sunday. Uh, Sunday I went to the flea market again. Uh, my good buddy Paul uh, called me up and said, what are you doing? Let's go Sunday morning to the flea market. We had a great day there and I need, I need some help from you guys. I ended up uh, I ended up buying a lot of reamers, and uh, I'm not going to move the camera. You don't need to see it, but I got a box of reamers. There's uh, 30, 40 reamers in there, and then right here adjacent to me, I've got a I've got a drawer uh, with trays in it that are full of reamers, and I'm, I'm going to throw this question out to you guys. Does anybody have a way to do a very good storage of reamers? I thought I was smart one night, and this was back uh, some time ago. I checked all my reamers, and I wrote down a list of all the reamer sizes I had. So I, I, I know in my drawer there's these reamers, and there's a little note here that says, See Red Train Tool Cabinet, where I've got much smaller reamers. I don't have the sizes there. Now i got another box full of reamers. Well... Smart Chuck here, I did this list, 
And although I did put it in three trays, there I still have to search. So if anybody has a method uh, to store reamers and sort, so you don't have to do it all the time, I'd love to hear it. Okay, walking around with the camera real quick. Said I wasn't going to show it, but here's the uh, reamers I picked up at the flea market. And then here is my drawer full of reamers uh, in my tooling cabinet. So if somebody has a uh, great method of uh, sorting and storage, please help me. So, oh, let's see, where'd my, where'd my uh, list go? Okay. Uh... The other thing, uh, I won't show it right now. Well, I'll sh eh, can you see it? Eh, can't see it. Uh, I got some new tooling for the Monarch. Um, I ended up uh, getting a faceplate for it down at the bash from uh, Tom Lipton. And then uh, my new buddy, Paul, I uh, appreciate it, Paul, had a uh, 5C uh, uh, hand wheel closer. Well, here's the collet chuck. Uh, I just I still haven't cleaned my lathe for making the uh, tooling for the hold ridge, but uh, I had to mount up the uh, the chuck here, and uh, it's a uh, uh, Hardage Solgren. Uh, excuse me, yeah, Hardage Solgren 5C collet closer. I don't know if I said that word right, but that's uh, what I said. D13 for the uh, machine, and. Uh, we're still uh, working out a nice trade for it, but uh, I'm really excited to have that. Okay, so I think that's enough yakking with you guys. You want to see some machining. So uh, let's see. Let's see what the screw bullet, screwy ball says. Do these guys want to watch some machining? Yes. <laughs> Will I keep their interest? Yes. Is there any bozos in this video? Very doubtful. This goddamn thing is unbelievable. Okay, uh, so we're going to create, going to move on and create um, a pocket. Uh, I'm going to show you that, how I did that. Uh, let me grab the, the tool. I'm creating a pocket in the, uh, in the tool there so your set screw can go in. And then uh, I didn't have a tool, a half inch tool for this this one that's right in here and there's a little click blurb in the surface grinder showing you that uh, I took a broken end mill and made the tooling for that. And uh, if we can we're going to get into a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, demonstration of that. I fooled with it. Pardon my reach guys. I fooled with it and uh, little dish and was starting to work on uh, a dish here also. Um, I got it, I, it was just to really check to see how my tool cut. <laughs> that's, that was the main thing. The tooling itself that I made fits perfect. That, that's not even an issue. All right, enough yakking. Uh, let's uh, move on and uh, see some machining. Thanks, guys. Okay, those copies are done. That copy's done, and this copy's done, other than a couple more holes. Got to put in some screw holes and the tool, tool hole. So checking the angle here, so I screwed the tap into the part that I'm copying. It's an extended long tap. I need to drill and tap here, and I need to know the angle. So I got it set up to find the angle, so I can get it set up in the mill and drill and tap. 15 degrees is my number, so got it sitting there on the angle block. Double checking it, and it's ready to be going, ready to be drilled. Okay, getting ready to mill the slot in here so I can put the set screw in. So, came over, put a half inch gauge pin in here, came down with the edge finder, found the edge of it, moved over. 250 thousandths after moving over the hundred thousandths for the edge finder. So I'm on center, came down, found just that uh, that recess right there where the angle changes and I have my Z uh, set at zero and I know I got to go 150 thousandths into the part to uh, create that slot. Um, 
tool set at 15 degree angle, sitting on a 15 degree block right here. Vice is tight, and uh, I think we're gonna go. Let's uh, let's give it hell and see what happens. So let's uh, let's go in about twenty thousandths. See what that gets us. Now what I didn't do is set a stop there. So let me set a stop. Okay. Let's go in another uh, 20. Got a four flute end mill there, 11.30 seconds. Okay, let's try another 20. Everything seems to be, be behaving okay. Alright, I see we're on the, I got you sitting on the mill, let me move the camera. The camera looks like it's shaking all over the place. Okay, let's try that. Go another, uh, another 20. And if it's shaking, guys, I'm too lazy to go get my tripod. I'm just hand feeding this with the quill. I'm not uh, engaging the uh, the drive. It doesn't. Uh, it's not grabbing, so it feels okay. So I think I can just stick with that.
Hey, liking it. All right, there's 150. It just doesn't look deep enough, though. I do a little measuring here. Okay, now I'm uh, on full depth in the X in the in the Z. I should uh, in the X, and now I'm going in the Z, taking twenty thousandths pass back to my full depth cut, but trying to get a little shelf in there now. So twenty thousandths depth cut here. Just taking it easy. can see in there or not but uh, let me do a little measure and see where I'm at it's looking pretty good all gone close okay getting pretty close another 20,000 uh, depth of cut on it You know, it's kind of interesting. Regular center drill, and uh, somewhere along the line, I picked up some long ones. I think this one's about four and a half inches long, and I've got a couple larger ones that are six inches long, you know, bigger diameter. And I always wondered when would I ever use one? Well, here it is. Time to use it. Perfect. Oh, 
Okay. DRO set on zero so we can find this spot again and let's uh, come back with a uh, drill bit. There's the uh, tool. That's six inches. Okay, let's punch a hole. See what we get. We're on zero zero, should be good to go. Not bad for a hair look. I don't think my regular tap will reach. We're going to see. Just for shits and giggles. But I'm pretty sure the, the chuck is going to hit. No, let me double check something. Did I go all the way through? I hit the mill stop. I may not went all the way through. Oh yeah, I went all the way through. Well, will this guy reach? Nope, it'll crash. So it's good to have a retired tool maker. Or a buddy. And a nice long extended tap. Take the table down. Okay, put this guy in back gear, get the tap just started, and then I think we're going to finish it by hand. It's a little long to be dicking around. So let's, uh, let's, give it a, let's give it a whirl here. This is my buddy Chewy that had this tap. Thank you, Chewy, my good friend. Let's see if I can uh, not break it. Yeah, I don't have a long enough countersink to countersink that hole. Uh, I could use a bigger drill bit. It certainly seems to be cutting really nice. But I'm going to finish it by hand. Okay. Set screw goes in. For money. So all I got to do is a little deburring, a little cleanup, and uh, we're ready to try to uh, do a little demo of one of these on the lathe. Just a quick shot of a uh, broken. 3 8 high-speed steel end mill uh, making a cutter for the hold ridge.